What's up, people? Supreme Decisions here. And tonight, I want to come to you because I gave you a case a couple days ago regarding procedural due process. Now, the big question is, what is procedural due process? And why is it important? I'm going to go into it in the context of understanding the foundation of setting up a detailed discovery because your foundation is something that is needed, you know, whenever you are building anything. The foundation determines how high you can go, how far you can go, how wide you can go. So this is where procedural due process is checked, challenged, and also, how about this? This is where procedural due process is weaponized in your favor because everyone is entitled to a vivid defense, or vigorous defense, excuse me. Well, if you have all your due process and it's done properly, it'll be vivid. But anyway, I talk about police don't know how to investigate because they're not trained to properly investigate it. They come up with a hypothesis and then they start to piece together things to fit their hypothesis. Now, procedural due process allows you to actually tear apart narratives. This is something that I go deeper into as the videos are going to start going up for the actual master class. So those can actually form, um, join in. I'm actually going to be doing some other aspects of the master class itself. But as I get more detailed, even in the weaponizing your defense modules of even this, I'm going to get to a point to where other aspects of the game are going to be exposed. So, procedural due process. The procedural due process requires government officials to follow fair procedures before depriving a person of life, liberty, or property. You're gonna hear me talk later about asset forfeiture. And I'm even gonna show you where the Supreme Court stated that the asset forfeiture is illegal. Just like I spoke about, I want to say two years ago, probably three, where I spoke about um, roadblocks are illegal. I even show you, um, what, five different cases in which the precedent was set and how those go beyond that. And then I gave you a couple of cases that kind of tie into the actual roadblock and your ID being checked. But again, procedural due process. When the government seeks to deprive a person of one of these interests, which is life, liberty, or property, procedural due process requires the government to afford that person at minimum notice, an opportunity to be heard, and a decision to be made by a neutral decision maker. Now, what happens is a lot of times we have we, we have police reports that go unchallenged. So we sit there and we get upset and say, well, they just took the word of the police officer. When in fact, when we go back to start watching where video is being challenged about the officer's statement, they never match. Or very seldom do they match. Let's put that. That's, it's almost like catching a leprechaun riding a unicorn. But... Again, this is where procedural due process comes in and weaponizing your defense. This practice extends to all government proceedings that can result in an individual's deprivation, whether civil or criminal in nature. I'm going to read that again because most people don't catch that. This protection extends to all government proceedings that can result in an individual's deprivation, whether civil or criminal from parole violation hearings to administrative hearings regarding government benefits and entitlements of full-blown criminal trials. Notice the context of it. If there is at any point a life interest, a liberty interest, or a property interest that is being challenged that can be taken from you, procedural due process was required, which is why I gave you Matthews v. Eldridge. Now, Notice in here, it also says, 
administrative because you'll often hear that a traffic citation is an administrative court, so they are not a court of record. But even procedural due process is required in administrative hearings. Again, which is why I gave you Matthew v. Eldridge. What happens is the rights that apply to civil due process and criminal due process are as follows. One, an unbiased tribunal. This is generally the person that's hearing the case or whatever have you. Two, the notice of the proposed action and the grounds asserted for it. Many times that'll be known as the nature of the action. This is supposed to be done within that notice. You also hear the nature or the cause of this action, which is generally when someone is challenging jurisdiction. But again, this is things that I go deeper into as I go into the master class. Three, the opportunity to present reasons why the proposed action should not be taken. These are things where if you're, you are the one that's suing someone, you'll see a 12B6. This is also the reasons to write a motion to dismiss or a couple other actions. Four, the right to present evidence, including the right to call witnesses. Now, these are challenges for a certain case. Presenting evidence is not something that you'll do in every case because if you are a defendant, you are not required to. I'm going to say that one more time because most people will miss that because we're programmed to, I want to tell my side when in fact I said a thousand times, no one cares about your side. However, you do have the right to present evidence, including the right to call witnesses. And that's civil and criminal. You have my favorite, the right to oppose, or excuse me, the right to no opposing evidence. Because what happens is when you send out a detailed discovery, you are asking for the evidence against you. Why? Because it is the accuser's responsibility to present evidence. Because they are the one telling the story. You have the right to confront your witnesses. You have the right to confront all evidence in front of you. That's why it's called an adversarial system. It is a confrontational system. You must be willing to confront because you have the right to know the evidence against you to also prepare. You have the right to prepare and participate in your defense. This also goes where we speak about, because you're going to see in a new series that I'm coming up with that, because I told you, you know, the Brady List cops, the Supreme Brady List has gone up. You're going to see the Supreme um, Bad Cops which is basically someone that didn't do an actual violation, but someone that, you know, can get someone else hurt because that's going to be something that goes up soon, as well as bad prosecutor and bad um, defense attorneys. And that includes public pretenders because I have a, a you know what, I'm not even going to get into it. But anyway, because you have a right to know and also prepare and participate in your own defense. Six. The right to cross-examine adverse witnesses. This is the fun thing. This is known as deposition. This is also the right to actually set them up and question them on the stand. But you never ask a question you don't already know an answer to and have evidence to support it. Always remember that. Seven, a decision based exclusively on the evidence presented. Now, this is where a lot of people get caught up at because even the police and most prosecutors, what they'll do is, just like I spoke about in the morality of murder, they'll, they'll do something as in the George Floyd. 
George Floyd, they were like, oh, well, he was a drug user. Oh, he did go to jail. Oh, and he was doing something else a year ago. But they never spoke about what George Floyd was doing right at that time. Just like when the police officer went to the wrong apartment and killed Amir Locke and then lied in his police report about it. We didn't hear anything else about that. Why not? Because if we found out he lied, which we did, and then we see a video that showed that he lied, which we did, they can't now justify or moralize that. So they cannot sully Amir Locke's name. What they'll try to do, as even myself, prior to my trial for a year and a half, for 18 months, I was everything but a child of God. And in the context of that, I actually went young Jeezy on him. I said, you can't assassinate my character because I'm not acting. That came across during the trial. A lot of times that is done through make-believe and dress-up. But that's also something I go over in the, um, the master class. So that's something that you also need to be aware of. Eight, the opportunity to be represented by counsel. Now, I just spoke about the bad defense attorneys. I also spoke about the um, ineffective assistant of counsel and the 65% of people that get off are there simply because their counsel did not perform properly. So that will be up to you. Nine, the requirement that the tribunal prepare a record of the evidence presented. I've often told people to get a certain form. 99% of people never get that form. I've even requested it here in El Paso multiple times and have only received it once. because. What happens is the system itself is not slanted to be procedural, fair, or follow due process. So just keep that in mind. But the record of me asking changed the context of it because most people don't even know to ask for that. So nine, requirement that the tribunal prepare a record of the evidence presented. Always keep that because you're still going to challenge it every step and every aspect of that. Ten, and lastly, the requirement that the tribunal prepare written findings of fact and respond for a decision. That's a beautiful thing, simply because I often tell people to get a copy of the judge's signed dis disposition. Because now the judge has liability attached to it because they've attached their name to that decision based on everything. And if you don't have a written record, if you don't have, or if you have not set up your case properly, you cannot appeal it properly. So line by line, precept upon precept was one thing my brother preached to me. This is what he was talking about. If you try to skip steps or you because you've seen something on YouTube that, oh, this guy did it and it worked. I'm giving you something that works every time. And even this is understanding the language of the court, because not only do you need someone that knows the game, but you know how to have it applied for your situation, because every situation is different. Every person's actions are different. So always remember that. Procedural due process is not an option. It's a requirement. But that also falls onto you when making sure it is carried out. So thank you guys for watching. Hit that thanks button. Hit the thumbs up. And also support the podcast supreme decision legal minute podcast on all your major podcasting platforms and don't forget if you feel like donating it's always open and appreciated because it's going right back into the channel supreme decisions i'm out